hello guys hope all of you are doing great i'm going to create a series of videos a few videos like five or six videos where we will see how to build an end-to-end -end application which involves a database beneath it specifically speaking we are going to develop an application a web-based application to maintain the student's academic history i mean the, the both for students as well as for admin Okay, the students will be able to log into the system to view their uh, 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 you know, academic history like grade cards of their previous semesters and all and also the students will be able to do uh, the course registration for the current semesters and those are the features that we will include in our app and also for the admin part the admin will be able to include our you uh, know include new students into the system as well as uh, defining the course structures like what are the courses which will be offered in this particular semester or uh, you know or doing a lots of other operations okay so uh, certainly we will not develop the entire application so it will take uh, you know months to build a complete application however in this series of videos we will learn those basic things which will be used again and again to make uh, the complete application Okay, so before actually going into the uh, the details of, of the thing, like how, what we're going to do and how we're going to do and all, first let's see a demo of an already developed application. Okay, like we are going to build some part of these applications, some part of these application which I already have built and which is currently being used by uh, uh, different organizations. So one of the organization is uh, our prestigious Tespur University. Now let's uh, see first a demo. Uh, suppose the student and, uh, has a login page from where the student has to give his or her role number. Say for example, uh, CSB20044 and the password, whatever it is. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, this demo is, uh, it is displayed from my local computer. That is the database which is connected to it, this application is a, a dummy version of, uh, uh, no, a dummy database. Um, the details and the records, uh, there are some dummy details and dummy records just for the sake of this demonstration purpose. Uh, it is not connected with any server. It is the same computer like, you know, it is, it is the, the web server. My laptop itself is the web server as well as the database server. And from my laptop itself, I'm accessing that web server or the application i'll go into the details of those things okay do not worry uh, so for the time being just remember that everything whatever it is there everything is inside my local computer now suppose the user uh, the student gives a role number and the student will be able to do log uh, you know uh, get into the system as well as the student enters into the system it uh, takes the student to the home page where some information about the student is displayed for the time being we're displaying here the name of the student and some other links there. You can see here, this is the menu bar. From here, the students will be able to see uh, previous semester grade cards like that. And the current semester courses, what the student has enrolled for. And uh, change the password. And then log out. And again, in the home page, if you see, there is another page that takes the student to the course registration page. From here, the student will be based on the program of the student. <coughs> based on the program of the student the student will be able to do the course uh, select the courses like say if the student wants to do a course registration for the third semester the student will click on this third three button and then a list of courses offered for third semester will be displayed if the student clicks on this uh, first semester button then these are the courses which are offered for the first semester of btech computer science and engineering in Tespur university Okay. And the course registration is happening for autumn semester 2021. So these things, like these things, these informations are actually like which semester, what is the current semester, what is the current session, uh, and which program the student has enrolled for, what are the courses offered in the first semester or in the second semester. All these things are all these information are already stored in the database. And our program just reads those information from the database and presents those information to the user uh, using some uh, using this graphical user interface. So we'll be learning like how to create this graphical inter user interface, how to retrieve information from the database, how to update information into the database, and then uh, you know, all those stuff we'll be learning. Let's see some more features of this software. So I showed you the uh, the student part, and uh, now say the admin part. 
for admin, we have a say different page. I'll be telling you again the details of those things. So the username is Boral and then password something uh, the corresponding one. So the, uh, for the admin part, there are two different types of admin right now we are dealing with. One is the faculty login. If it is a faculty, then the faculty will be, see, this is an invalid username I have given actually. And so it's showing me an error message. But say, for example, the admin login. So this is an admin account. If I click on here, so it will take you take the user to the admin page. From this admin page, based on the requirement, different options are given. Different options or different you know, pages has been developed. So the admin will be able to just for the sake of demonstration, I'll show you. I, I'm showing you. And why I'm showing you this demonstration? Because from here we'll be learning like you know, in this app some features are there and like we'll see in these uh, series of videos like how to develop those features and what are the technologies that we need to know to actually develop those features there okay say for example course registration if the user clicks on this particular button i'm calling it as a button this particular button then this page comes appears on the screen and then it, it shows different information to the user like total number of students and total number of programs and uh, and all these stuffs and then if the user clicks on any one of the program it will show the list of the students there enrolled in that program and right now it is showing uh, the students in different colors like green and red red means the student has not done any course registration for the current semester and green means the student has done course registration for the current semester if the user if the, if the user clicks on this button a pop-up window comes appears on the screen and it shows like these are the courses the student has taken in this semester and this is the result of the student till the previous semester and if the user clicks on this ok button it disappears these things will learn actually how to display that pop-up window on the screen technically what uh, you know how, how we achieve that goal these sort of things certainly will learn and some other, if the user clicks on this operation, lots of different operations uh, the user will be able to do. And these operations, you can see technically, these are called as the use cases. When you do the, when you actually develop an application, first thing that you have to do is this requirement analysis. From the, during that requirement analysis part, you will be, you know, investigating the actual user of the of the of the system. And based on those users, will tell you some scenarios. Okay, these are the situations where you know, these are the situations uh, uh, where we'd like to use our system or these are the situations that we'll encounter that we'll you know or that we want our software or the system to support so that uh, we can perform those operations so those are called as use cases from this requirement we actually uh, decide okay these are the use cases specified by the user and accordingly we have to develop the software so based on the you know, requirement collected with this uh, like different use cases has been identified and based on those use cases these different features has been added to the software okay one of the feature is like admission table so this is your admission page from here what the admin will be able to do is say in 2020 2021 autumn semester who are the students who enrolled into that in that particular semester these are the students who enrolled uh, to that organization in this particular semester these are the students who enrolled in that uh, uh, in the organization uh, on the fly suppose uh, you know we want to add a new student uh, so we have to select the admin has to select the corresponding semester in which semester the student has taken admission and then add a student if the user clicks here see another pop-up window comes here the, the user will write some say for example some role numbers i'm just writing something there so whether it is a new student or an old student immediately see as soon as the control goes out of this 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 text box it, it the soft, software actually checks the database see immediately a database connection is made it, it went into the database it check it, it check like whether that particular student already there in the software or not so if it is not there it is saying it's a new student say for example i give you a role number that exists say for example i give the third one app 21103 just for a second one example again app 21 uh, one zero three so this is a c here i'm trying to add a new student whose role number i have given in this way as soon as i click there since that student is already there in the software so for that reason it is not showing it's a new student okay so uh, if i try to like you know give these things and if i click on save button it'll be saying it's updated but the thing is that no students will be added actually okay so those features will learn <coughs> 
concern here is that how like from here how we can make an a, a make a database connection and how we can retrieve those information how our system knows whether that particular student is there or not there right so those things so in terms of sql query you, you know how to write that like select star from student details say and the, where the roll number is equal to this so that is the query we know that but from this program how we can actually fire that query to the database engine so that the database returns us like if the database like the result of that query like select star from student details where roll number is csm 20 if we get some information and uh, then we have to display the student is found if we do not get any information then we have to display like the student is a new student so how do we do it programmatically the result returned by the database we interpret using a program and then that program displays uh, and, uh, sends those uh, or displays those information uh, in a readable way or in a more user friendly way to the user so those things will be learning as I said, no, it is a, it will be an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, end to end application in the sense that you'll be learning everything. You'll be learning how to do the client-side scripting. You'll be like learning how to do the server-side scripting. You'll be learning how to do the uh, you know, database design. You'll be learning how to do this uh, graphical user interface design and all these stuff you'll be learning, okay? Now, uh, another features, like another features will be this report section. You can see that so here, print the grade submission form, suppose, just I'm telling you, uh, the main concern here is say, uh, we want to print, like what we can do is we can generate some PDF on the fly. These PDFs are not stored there in the computer already, in, not in the form of PDF. Actually, these PDFs are generated dynamically based on the information which is stored there in the database. So we'll be learning like how we can actually create the such PDFs like in this particular format or in any format based on the based on your need. You know, if you know how to create this PDF, then you know how how to create any PDF basically, right? So those concepts we'll be learning in this series of videos. Another thing that I want to focus here is that um, say uh, like say this particular this this page here. Okay, now this is a big screen. So I'm I'm viewing this right now. I'm viewing this page in a 15 inch monitor. Now um, suppose my screen size is smaller. Like so I reduce my screen size. So that time you see you should notice that uh, the interface. The graphical user interface is actually uh, automatically adjusted. Say so here, I select, I select any one of the course. This PDF viewer is also now, uh, you know, adjusted according to the size of the screen. If I make it a bit bigger, it will be like this. Now, see here, at this point, it is showing you it, it in two column, but each column is of having small size. Here, they are displayed in one column because the size is very small. Here, they are displayed in two columns and you know both of them are both these two columns are taking proportional size and uh, you know those steps so this sort of uh, graphical user interface is called as your responsive uh, interface it means uh, you know based on the screen size where you are viewing the application uh, or viewing the interface uh, automatically the interface organizes itself so the, the here we are going to achieve these uh, you know responsiveness of the interface using the concept of or using this technology which is called as your css Okay, so basically we'll be learning CSS also up to a great extent uh, in this series of videos. Having said so, um, now let's see uh, how, what are the things that we need to develop such an application. So first thing is uh, we need a code editor. The, the first thing is obviously the laptop or the computer that you need to have where you'll be doing all this development. Suppose we assume that all of us have that. And then the next thing that you'll be needing is a code editor. Like, do you remember your C programming courses? Like there you use an editor to type your C program. Say for example, um, you uh, you suppose you are using Linux, then most probably you used VI editor, or if you are using Windows, then Dave C plus plus, or some other editor. Most of some of you might have written your code in Notepad also. Notepad itself is an editor, right? Where you can edit some text. So basically, we'll be needing a text editor that allows us to write the program. We can we can do uh, using a, a very simple te general purpose text editor like Notepad. However. There are some specific purpose, like you know, for programming purpose, for this sort of work, we have some specifically designed IDs are there. 
one of the id that we'll be using in this series of videos um, uh, is very user friendly and that is called as a visual studio code the first thing that you need to do is on that you need to have is uh, this visual studio code uh, ide installed in your computer how you're going to install that visual studio code ide in your computer simple you just do a google search and type their visual studio code visual studio code if you press enter it will take you to the uh, you know uh, the the home page of visual studio code from there you will can you'll be able to download uh, the installer like if you're using windows you download it for windows if you're using linux you download it for linux these are standard things right i, I guess people know it very well now once you install download and install that visual studio code in your computer uh, you should be able to access it in this way so in like in the search bar i'm writing visual studio code and if you click there this application this id will open and we'll be using this particular id to develop our applications okay that is we'll be writing all our php code javascript code css code in this id itself and again you might be asking sir can i use uh, another ide certainly you can use any id that you like you can do a google search like what are the other options available there instead of visual studio code one option is this notepad however uh, for this series of videos and no, I, I find it very suitable actually there are many features there in visual studio code that are that, that makes it very user friendly one of the features that i like very much is uh, it allows you to auto save your code like you do not have to uh, again and again press on this control s or you know save button as soon as you type automatically the code is uh, you know saved there uh, so those sort of that is just one of the features that I told you, but there are many other features that makes it more very user friendly actually, and you will find it very comfortable to use this Visual Studio Code editor. Okay, so having said so, this is an optional thing. You, if you want, certainly you can work with Notepad. As I, again, I'm saying it, but we'll be using Visual Studio Code. That is an optional software that you should have to develop this sort of application. The another one, another software. Uh, suppose you have installed Visual Studio Code. Then what next you need? Another software that you need, and that is very important, huh? Here you should realize for this development purpose, another piece of software which is damn important is your, uh, you know, Jam Server. You have to install something called as Jam Server in your computer. So you do a Google search, type there X A M double P and server. Press enter. The first page usually will be the, you know, the the first search result will be the home page of Jam Server. From there, without knowing anything, you simply click on this uh, corresponding uh, download button. Like if you're using Linux, just uh, use download it for Linux or you know, um, this OS X or Windows operating system. Based on your operating system, download the proper version and install it first. Once you have that Jam server installed in your computer, if in in your computer now in the search uh, in the search bar, if you type there Jam, you should see that this app should be this app should appear there. If you click on this app, your uh, this is the interface for Jam server. Two things you should. Uh, uh, you know, two things you should see here. One is this Apache server is installed automatically and this MySQL server. And these two servers will be using. When I say server, you just consider that these two are a specific program. As, as the name itself indicates here, MySQL, you know that, right? It is quite familiar to you. That is the SQL server. That is the, you know, database server, which you'll be needing to create your database or to, you know, um, um to you know, cre create your database tables create their relationship uh, executing uh, commands to store data there to retrieve data from there and all this stuff and these apache server that is important to make your computer or to you know a, a, a web server that will allow you to your computer to behave like a web server Okay. By default, the state of those two servers are uh, you know, in, in stop state, uh, but if you want your computer to, uh, what, um, like, um, if you want other users to execute or in, uh, activate your, uh, your, your, your application, then what you have to do is you have to click on the start button there. What I mean is, see, I'm right now, these two, uh, these two servers are in off state. I'll be telling you in some more details about these two servers in a moment, but suppose uh, for the time being, these two servers are in the stop state. 
and then I try to access some of the pages from here. See, right now in my Xam server, both these two servers are off. Now, suppose I click on this, uh, this operations button. Now, if I click on this operations button, you can see that it is now the site cannot be reached. Because my web server is off, so for that reason, this program is not working anymore. This program is there in my web server. And if I want to execute this program, my web server should be turned on. Then only my this program will work. See here, as soon as I click on this admin, uh, this Apache server, I turn on. And also my SQL server, because I, I want my application to retrieve information from the database. So I'm turning both these two applications on. And then I refresh this space. Immediately, everything is fine. So now let's see what happens when you install Xam server in your computer and what is the meaning of these two Apache and MySQL? Who are like what are them actually? Okay, so for that, what you need to understand is that like when you install in your this is your computer, say it may be a laptop or it may be a desktop. Suppose this is your computer. When this is your computer, like let me draw it in the form of a laptop. Now, when you install your Xam server there, minimum two servers are getting installed. One is that Apache server, that is basically a wave server, okay? That is, you can think like this is a program that allows your computer. Now, this program actually, you know, the, the, this program allows your computer to listen to port number 80, port number 80, over the internet it means like um, over the internet uh, people can um, you know like your computer now is ready to accept http request basically over this http protocol um, at port number 80 this program will listen to um, uh, uh, it, it will start listening to port number 80 for all the incoming http requests those http requests you can think like those are the requests to execute some programs which are stored in your computer which is acting as a server there like some program could be like a.php the name if you're using so we'll be using php programming language i'll come into the details but um, so you can use other programming languages also like asp.net or java or you know python or 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 what uh yeah Perl or anything basically okay so a PHP program and so these programs actually users or the users of of the software or the application will be able to ex execute these programs which are there in your computer or in the server computer this is your server computer one in that server computer you have this server in server program installed that allows your computer to listen to a particular port uh, for uh, you know over this http protocol now using this http protocol that is what like using any web browser a user will be able to access any of the program which is stored there in the web browser uh, in the web server okay and these web server again in the same computer since you want to store your data permanently you have these up uh, you know this database server that is mysql server okay this db server now, as soon as the user requests for a particular page, here we call this thing, whatever you write here, HTTP colon slash slash, this is your web browser, okay? From this web browser, the user will be able to execute any, any program which is there in the web server, right? When I say any program, basically you just think like, yeah, most of the programs. We'll, we'll come into the details of those. So when from a web browser, the user typically, we say like the user is requesting for a particular page. It means that the user is interested in executing a particular program there in the web server. That program gets executed and whatever the results are there, those results are sent back to the browser. During this execution, that program, that a.php program might have to actually access some of the data which is stored there in the database server. So we'll be seeing about those details. But for the time being, you, you should remember that we need to install this Jam server, Jam server to install this component, this web server component and this database server component in our computer. Another thing I want to tell you that, as I said, no, this web server makes your computer a web server. It means that your computer now will be, if this component is installed in a computer and it is turned on, then your computer will be able to listen to port number 80. Now, to this port number 80 in uh, request 
can come over the internet if your computer is connected with the internet or what we can do is during the development phase what we'll be doing is will it is not needed that during development your computer has to be connected with the internet it is not needed what we can do is in the same computer from the same computer you can use a web browser anything like mozilla or google chrome or anything internet explorer from that web browser you can act you can you know send a request now what we can think is from these web browser you can send a request uh, via this port number 80 to your web browser so although everything is there in the same computer but still it will mimic as if the requests now see for this computer it doesn't matter like from which web where that web browser is from where the request is sent it may be there in the same computer or it may be from a different computer over the internet okay so that part should be clear so for that reason, we have to install this Jam server. And if we want our program to run, uh, like we want our user to run these programs, then what we have to do is we have to turn on this web server and we have to turn on this database server. Now, see, if these two servers are off, it means that from our browser, when we send a request, if this server is off, then no, nobody is listening to us. So for that reason, the, our program, like which program the user wants to execute, that, uh, that, you know, that, uh, that, that, that user's inter intention will not reach to the server, actually. So for that reason, if these servers are off, then the user will not be able to execute anything. What? one thing these two are different servers right you can turn on see, independently you can turn on this web server uh, as well as this uh, 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 database server now see if you turn on only the web server or uh, turned off the database server then what will happen is it, this will work fine like your request will go to the web server web server will try to execute this space now if this space or inside this program if you're trying to access the database server that time it will see if the database server is on or off if it is off then your program will show you some error if it is on then only your program will be able to access the database and another thing you should remember that it is not always needed that all the programs that are in the server always has to access this database. No, it might not be. There, there might be a single, a simple page that doesn't actually need to access this database. In that case, no problem. You can work only with this web server. However, since it is a database application, certainly we'll assume that this database server also, that is our programs, most of the times will access this, uh, this database also. So for that reason, we have to turn on this, turn on this database server also. So that's all. Those are the things that you will be needing um, to uh, develop this um, application. So just to do a recap, what are the things? Uh, the first thing is what what are the concepts that we'll be learning? We'll be learning uh, to code uh, server side code in PHP and uh, like how to and using this PHP how we can access uh, a database server. That is how we can execute queries in a database server. Plus, we'll be learning um, something called as the concept of AZEX. You know, on the fly. See, uh, when I enter a, like here, you see just, just, just where this AZEX is happening. Say, I show you one example I show you. Uh, I showed you already, so that's why, again, I'm showing you the same thing. So, for example, the student login, and then I write here some, some, some roll number there and some password there. I log in, and then I go to this course registration. And I see here right now for this semester one, what are the courses? Those things are not available, right? If I click here on the fly, see the first part of the page is not changed. Only this table is appearing uh, dynamically, isn't it? If I click here, this table has only changed. The rest of the things are same. So this thing is uh, like, you know, is done with the help of, uh, with the concept of, like we have applied uh, the concept of AZEX there. Like AZEX allows you to partially update your page without actually doing a complete, uh, you know, reload of the page. You'll be seeing some advantage of AZEX there. Okay, uh, like um, we'll be discussing some some uh, some something more about this AZEX. But main concern will be like suppose we know AZEX and then how we can apply or how we can uh, you know apply the concept of AZEX uh, when we develop an application. That thing we'll be learning in more details in in terms of code, not in terms of theory. Theory you can read from Google if you do AZEX. Uh, if you search uh, on this AZEX, you'll come to know like what this AZEX technology allows you to do. And what are the advantages? Okay, and then we'll be learning something about this JavaScript code. 
like see here all these things are these as x call like when we do when we do this as x is a technique right how we are going to implement that technique using this javascript code like what is this javascript code typically they are known as your client side scripting these are client side scripting or coding okay and these php coding uh, is your server side coding server side coding and again see along with this this client side coding along with this client side coding uh, again i said not these web pages uh, no, we'll we'll try to develop this uh, uh, we'll try to write the code in such a way that this interface is responsive in the sense that if i make it smaller if i make this size of the screen smaller see the, the automatically the interface is readjusted everything is like you know properly see i do not have to scroll anything like whatever the space is available all the information is displayed within that space only it's not like you know i have to scroll towards left or right like that so if i make it bigger automatically it, it gets uh, the interface is automatically reorganized to completely uh, you know make use of the available uh, screen size so that uh, you know, responsiveness how we can achieve that also we will learn up to great detail technically uh, i mean and practically we will learn like how we can do that thing practically using the concept of css like how css allows us to design um, different components of our user interface like how to like put this round corner specifically like you know uh, i'm just giving you some examples how to change the color of these buttons how do i achieve like as soon as i keep my mouse cursor on any on the top of any one of these buttons like they are changing their color and all how do you achieve that thing uh, basically that is achieved by uh, you know using the concept of css and this responsiveness like how do you achieve that responsiveness that is again uh, done using css so those concepts also we'll be learning here like some part of some portion of javascript some portion of css some portion of asx some portion of the server side scripting okay and certainly we'll be learning as i said now here this database part like we'll be learning how to design the database like based on the requirement what should be the tables that are in my database and what should be the relationship among those tables in the database so that part also will touch up to great uh, now up to some extent at least okay so overall uh, uh, in this series of videos we'll be learning concepts like this and at the end like if you learn if you if you can digest this this series of videos that will be not much i i mean when have five six videos so within these five six videos you'll be learning all these concepts and you will be ready to develop develop an application and a database based application not only the database part but also the you know the other other components that's why i'm saying it is a, a complete end-to-end -end application development you'll be learning everything the server side scripting the client side scripting the css javascript ajax and all these steps okay so and uh, that those are the things that we'll be learning and the final point here what are the things that we need or what are the you know like tools that we need to have uh, the first tool is certainly one the most important one is you need to have a computer that we all have we are assuming then you need to install visual studio code this is a freely available software so do not need to worry just do a google search and install and then finally you need to install this jam server that will install two pieces of very crucial softwares that will be needing one is your web server software another is your database server software for web server that is specifically that uh, that specific server is the apache server for database servers specific database server is your mysql database server so if you install this visual studio and jamp and if uh, you know in your computer then we are ready to develop um, uh, the application